In past videos, we've been discussing some of my favorite D&D class and Grim Hollow transformation combinations, which make the most mechanical and thematic sense to me. If you don't know, transformations are a powerful set of mechanics that allow player characters to undergo a horrendous change into a monstrous creature. They allow players to explore what it's like to transform into a vampire, a werewolf, or an aberrant horror. They come with a terrifying amount of new mechanical buffs that are in addition to the racial traits, class features, and possible feats that your player characters may already have. This makes the players feel like their character is growing in strength and power as the transformation takes hold. They also include monstrous flaws that your player characters must grapple with, such as sunlight hypersensitivity or a gnawing hunger which must be fed. This provides amazing quest and roleplay opportunities as your player characters grapple to keep their literal inner demons at bay and possibly go in search of a cure. In our previous videos on transformations, folks were asking in the comments section, how do you feature transformations in your campaign? Are they just another feature to be chosen by each of the player characters in a gothic horror monster mash? Or are they a punishment? Should the GM force a transformation upon a player character as a consequence for a difficult fight with an undead creature? Should you talk about transformations in your session zero? My name is Ben Byrne and this is what you need to know about about including monstrous transformations in your D&D 5e campaign. So first of all, right off the bat, yes, you should absolutely talk about transformations in your session zero if you think it's something that you wanna be included in the campaign. Whether you're the GM who thinks it would be something cool to add to your game world, or you're a player who would like to play a vampire or a werewolf or attempt to ascend to lichdom. When running that session zero, ask at the table, who would like to have their character undergo a transformation? Does everybody at some point, or is it just one or two specific players? Does the group want to plan out which transformations and when they might occur, just like any other part of mapping out your character's class advancement? Or do you want transformations to be spontaneous and occur organically during the campaign? Are players comfortable with having a measure of control over their character taken away by the transformation flaws? Are the players comfortable with role-playing these flaws and the vulnerability their characters may experience while grappling with these flaws? Are the players all comfortable with the potential for themes of body horror as their character's body is twisted and changed by the transformation? Answering no to any of those questions doesn't mean you can't include transformations in your campaign. It might just mean that you focus a little bit less on the more horrible, gribbly, gritty side of the transformation. What I will say is that the way transformations were designed, they aren't intended purely for their mechanical buffs. In earlier videos, just like this one, deliberately construct class and transformation combos that work for both combat and roleplay because transformations were intended to add to the story of your campaign. So with all those questions in mind to consider for your group, let's look at some of the approaches you could take to transformations depending on how your group answers some of those questions. The Dark Fantasy Approach. This is the way of including transformations in your campaign as they were designed and intended. Transformations are rare and not easily sought after or inflicted with. Vampires only impart their dark gift to the most loyal of their servants. Liches guard the secret to immortality jealously. Once in three lifetimes, is there a prophet holy enough to ascend as a seraph. Aberrant mutations are terrifying because they're mysterious and 
almost never witnessed. A transformation should occur organically in this approach over the course of the campaign. During a fight with a werewolf, or after doing service to a fey queen, or after a player character has died and is resurrected as a spectre, which is a great way to bring back a character that the player doesn't yet want to let go of. Transformations can be flagged in the campaign to your players very strongly as something that they can aspire for or try to avoid. There is a fiend looking to contract an apprentice in exchange for some work, clearly an opportunity to undergo a fiend transformation. Or perhaps there is a tome of evil, a weapon from the void or some other magical relic, which rumors say inflict aberrant mutations upon whoever possesses it. Meaning that there is an opportunity here to aspire for or try to avoid an aberrant horror mutation. Depending on your player's attitude towards that, that uh, magical MacGuffin could be a central part of the campaign that the players have to figure out how to handle safely, or it could be something that they rush for because they want that uh, transformation to take place. Alternatively, your transformations may happen suddenly and with little warning. A character sacrifices themselves to a fire elemental and returns shortly after, infused with power from the primordial energy. Or a character has lost a fight to a vampire and is turned into a creature of the night as a worse punishment than death. The victim of the transformation may then choose to embrace or desperately try to escape it. Though, of course, the player should always be willing to roleplay this uh, as part of their character. Talk to the player before the transformation takes place to ensure they're cool with the idea. Yes, I want to transform into a mule aberrant, mutated, disgusting mess. Tempt your players with the power that they might receive during the transformation, but forewarn the transformation flaws that they will need to contend with uh, during the roleplay. Roleplay and narrative is really at the forefront of this approach to including transformations, and the mechanics are designed to support that. The transformation flaws should be fully leaned into tackling a dark fantasy approach to them. Does the character character become tormented? Does the theme of their character become struggling with self-acceptance? Does the character embrace the transformation and become monstrous, leading to inner party conflict as the rest of the group try to help or cover up for their friend? The point is that transformations in a dark fantasy style approach should be rare, only really one or two of them in a single campaign, but have a massive impact on the campaign. Does the party now quest to achieve a specific transformation? Does the party quest to try to cure a specific transformation? Perhaps nobody in the group suffers a transformation at all, but the threat of it is enough to impact the campaign, avoiding conflict with werewolves and discarding cursed magic items. Of course, in this style of campaign, you should also fully lean into the horrific descriptions of the transformation when they occur. Skin flays from the emerging fur as you emerge as a lycanthrope. Bones break and reshape into an aberrant horror's limbs. Your spectral form is frightening and ghastly as your skin is translucent and your skeletal system is seen underneath. Something like that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Some of the options in here seem pretty cool, but can I play a vampire? The planned character approach to transformations could be like the dark fantasy approach atmospherically, but this time is a planned part of a character's creation instead of something that happens during the campaign almost by happenstance. While the dark fantasy approach may be GM-led with opportunities for transformations sprinkled into the campaign, the planned character approach is player-led. A player at your table might have always dreamed of playing a vampire, a werewolf, or or ascending to lichdom. If this describes you, have a conversation with your GM about which transformation you would like to undergo and when you want it to happen during the campaign and how you think it will best 
fit within the party and the rest of the campaign. Do you have a really cool shadow sorcerer vampire in mind for your next character? Do you want to play a Cthulian investigator who is slowly changing into an aberrant horror due to your research? The timing might also be important as well. Do you want to start with your transformation at the beginning of the campaign as part of your character's background? Or do you want it to happen during a quest that you want the GM to facilitate for you? Just keep in mind that you want to work with your GM and the rest of the party to make sure your transformation jives with the tone and atmosphere of the rest of the campaign. And also note that you need to think of ways to roleplay your monstrous flaws that don't overly hamper the rest of the party, especially if you're the only one with a transformation. For example, for the same reasons that a warlock or a mischievous rogue, a wizard trying to ascend to Lichter may cause in a party conflict of the unfun kind with the party paladin who has vowed to vanquish all evil. The planned campaign approach is a more GM-led approach again, where the campaign may center on a party member or multiple party members suffering from a transformation. In contrast to the planned character approach, where the transformation may be part of a single character's background, or at least it's not the central part of the campaign, the planned campaign approach intends to make the transformations a key part of the story and mechanics. The GM might inflict a transformation on one or two or maybe Maybe the entire party due to time spent in the opening dungeon and the rest of the campaign becomes about curing that transformation. Or perhaps the party are questing in the Feywild and while there, the innate magical energies of the Feywild are turning them all into Fey creatures. If the transformation completes, the party become trapped in the Feywild forever. Yet, while they remain, they continue to grow in strength as the Fey transformation takes hold. Maybe just like in the seminal, 2004 monster movie classic Van Helsing, a Hugh Jackman early outing that was, a real classic movie. The only way to destroy a mighty vampire lord is to become a werewolf due to a prophecy or some innate weakness the vampire has. Therefore, the party must seek out a pack of werewolves and decide who among the party will make the sacrifice of undergoing the transformation. Although, of course, most likely no one's going to miss out on the fun, so they're all going to want to transform into the werewolf. This approach, of course, hinges on the players being comfortable with transformations to begin with and which transformation is likely to be inflicted during the campaign and when. So a discussion should be had during session zero. If you want it to be a surprise for the players, uh, some sort of twist that the vampire can only be damaged by a werewolf, at least check that the players are comfortable with transformations to begin with. And if it's going to be a major part of the campaign, like the players traveling to the Feywild and completing quests there while they will transform into Fae, make it part of your pitch of what the campaign is before you all start playing. The Monster Mash Approach. Ah, ah, ah. The Monster Mash approach is much like the planned character approach, except every player is encouraged to choose a transformation as part of their character creation. This approach where everybody is turning into something different is going to have a much higher fantasy vibe, even if you're going for a dark fantasy or grounded atmosphere, because everybody is going to have access to these otherworldly powers and flaws. However, if you wanted to, you could even go for like an Adam's Family vibe or a Hotel Transylvania vibe. In earlier discussed approaches when only one character is experiencing a transformation, they can seem unfairly more powerful than other characters at the table. And their flaws can sometimes dominate the campaign because it becomes an issue that the whole party need to deal with as the transforming character hungers for blood or souls or wheat bix or whatever they hunger for. The Monster Mash approach evens out the playing field so everybody gets to experience what it's like being a monster and no one character shines as the center of attention any more than any of the others. The Vile Creatures Approach. Last but not least is what I call the Vile Creatures Approach, which is basically including transformations as part of an evil campaign. Transforming characters are always going to be morally complex, but here they're downright dastardly. 
Are you a lich harvesting souls for power? Perhaps your fellow party members are spectres that you've bound to your service. Do you want to roleplay the Crimson Court themselves from Etheris, rising to power after the Darkfall? Are you a pack of werewolves fighting to destroy a vampire clan with no regard for the mortals that get caught in between? Or, of course, you can mix this with the Monster Mash approach to become a cavalcade of vile creatures, each with your own goals and and objectives. Celeste Connorwich has written an amazing collection of articles for running an evil campaign, which I'll link in the description. And of course, your transformation flaws might not seem so much like flaws if you don't have moral boundaries that you hold your character to. And those are the approaches that I like to take to including transformations in my D&D campaign. Did I get them all? Do you have a different approach when you've used them in your campaigns before? We'll be back next week with another video about running D&D in a dark fantasy atmosphere. And of course, if you want to know more about transformations, you can check out this video here or this video here where we talk about my favorite transformation and class combinations, one of which might be perfect for you if you're doing the planned character approach. <laughs>